What's up guys, Greg here, and today I'm going to be reviewing and taking a look at a film that I saw on Netflix, I do a lot of Netflix stuff on here, called A Futile and Stupid Gesture. All on today's Greg's Vlog Reviews. Could you just introduce yourself? Hey, my name is Doug Kenny. I started the uh, National Lampoon. What if you say, I was the man who changed comedy forever, but I couldn't change myself? Really? Blow me. So this is what my, my wife picked out. We'd seen a trailer for it, but we kind of forgot about it. It came out a few years ago, and it's about Douglas Kenny, the guy who founded and ran National Lampoon, uh, a writer, uh, a comedic writer. She also wrote the screenplay for Animal House, and he did Caddyshack, or kind of what he's known for. So as a millennial, like, I didn't obviously grow up with National Lampoon. I actually, in fact, didn't realize they were a magazine until I saw this. I, I've seen Animal House. I've seen Vacation. I've seen the original Vacation. I've seen Caddyshack because uh, of my dad. My dad showed me all the National Lampoon movies and for some other millennials out there they may even recognize the title National Lampoon's Van Wilder which is kind of more uh, recent well, recent-er. I mean, it's obviously still an old film, but, you know, so obviously, like, I grew up with National Lampoon as, a, like, a film label, which they became after the magazine, but this is not the story about that. This is a story about specifically Douglas Kenny, who founded the magazine, runs the magazine in his life, and it's told in a very interesting way. It's, it's told from his older self's perspective, talking looking back on his life events, which is interesting. I've seen that done before in certain uh, films, but it's not done a lot. This isn't a documentary style film by any means. It is a film, like there are characters. And speaking of the actors, there are a like a plethora of just comedians all over the place. Uh, and what I thought was really was really great is there are a lot of cameos from Douglas Kenny's Animal House and Caddyshack. Like they're sprinkled about here and there, but they're actual, they're actual some of the actors that played those characters are in it for like a brief cameo. And if you're not watching closely or recognize them or haven't seen the movies, you're gonna miss that. So I do recommend seeing Animal House and Caddyshack before this. But yeah, they tell the story in a really unique way. And they also break the fourth wall a lot saying like, oh, well this actually really didn't happen this way, but for the sake of storytelling and dramatic effect, we made it happen this way. So, so for people who have no idea who Douglas Kenny was, which is the majority of people out there, including myself, you'll have a new fond appreciation for his work. Obviously with the magazine coming in the late 60s, early 70s, it was a, interesting time period and he was doing really edgy things uh, it, in fact if you look at like meme culture now and stuff he was doing a lot of that with his magazine at the time in the 70s which is insane like just to show you how far ahead he was from a artistic creative standpoint and it's a really interesting story just to watch this empire that he kind of makes and folds and it also shows you like a sad part of it as well because as an artist and as a comedian i mean they pull stuff from pain but what's the saying like i think the saying goes uh so i think the saying is comedy is born out of tragedy right so you're watching his life unfold and the events that perspire in it and he's not a perfect dude you know just like any other human being he's fallible he makes mistakes he doesn't make the best decisions and it's a really interesting human story about one man's journey in hollywood and in just being uh, a comedic icon because honestly artists are their hardest critics in, in fact, it becomes very inspirational and inspiring to see Douglas Kenny in this film, who's played by Will Forte, by the way, who does a phenomenal job, talk about his life and kind of look upon it as a failure, which is bizarre. I mean, even if you guys have never seen Animal House or Caddyshack, you've heard of those films. Like, you know those films. You've seen National Lampoon in, in places. Like, you've heard of that. Like, it's a household name. People know who they are. And it's really a sad story to see someone look at themselves that way. But that's how a lot of creatives look at themselves, as failures, even if they have massive successes. It's really interesting to see that from that standpoint in that time period, from, a, from no less a writer's perspective, because so much of the actors and directors get credit for films, and I feel like the writer gets shafted a lot in situations like that, because the screenplay is important. Writing dialogue is important important. I mean, every aspect of filmmaking is important, but I definitely feel that the writer of the feature films and these AAA pictures get shafted a lot. Because when they're, especially when they're not the director writer combo, you know? But anyway, if you're not familiar with it, uh, I'm gonna say some spoilers now. If you wanna watch it, it is a good film. You should watch it. You actually see a lot of characters that you you'll you know. There are a lot of comedians playing other comedians. Uh, obviously, like Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, uh, Jim Belushi, like uh, John Belushi, excuse me, Jim is his brother. John Belushi, they're all in the film, but they're, they're not themselves, obviously because John Belushi has passed on and Chevy Chase probably didn't want to be in it because he's too old, but they have them playing their younger selves. And some of the actors do a really good job at mimicking Gilda Radner and Bill Murray and these really famous comedians that a lot of people would know on SNL. Um, and you can kind of see where they got their start 
in in the industry, you know, on radio and through National Lampoon, which is really fun to see. There's even an old throwback to SNL there about poaching their talent on their radio show, which is, uh, it's, uh, I do believe that was true. Uh, obviously, they, they recognize talent and they pull it. Anyway, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so spoilers from here on out, just so you know, because I wasn't familiar with his character. So if you want, don't want to be spoiled, stop watching now, but you should watch the film. So Douglas Kenny committed suicide um, in 1980 at the age of 33. Uh, there is some speculation about it, about if he jumped or if he fell or was thinking about jumping and tried to climb down. Like, we, sad truth is, we'll never truly know because the only person who knows that was, was him. It's a really sad story at the end because I really didn't know anything about the writer personally. I thought that the person on camera portraying old Douglas Kenny was actually Douglas Kenny, but it was not. It was an actor portraying him. And uh, it kind of made me, like, it actually made me sad for a long time after watching it because at its core, Douglas Kenny was a very talented individual doing a lot of interesting things and new things that Hollywood wasn't really thinking about or doing and he made a lot of friends that are household names now even Ivan Reitman Harold Ramis Chevy Chase Rodney Dangerfield Bill Murray like he made all these friends and acquaintances over the years that are were huge actors in the 80s and even into the 90s and even now I mean Bill Murray is still huge today and seeing his journey from college to his death was a very eye-opening experience and it was a sad one because he viewed his life as a failure and when you look back at movies like Caddyshack and Animal House, they were ahead of their time. And yes, some of the stuff in there would not fly today in 2021. But you know what? At the time, it was edgy and it was new and it was different, you know, in a way that people hadn't seen before. So a sad story to a really interesting film. Watch it. Uh, of course, it's not a full on blown documentary. It is based on a book. So... I don't know how much they kept from the book or changed from the book or whatnot. Sometimes things are changed to make a more dramatic effect. Obviously, they make fun of that in the film itself as well. It's directed by David Wayne, who's also a uh, co comedic writer. He's done a lot of uh, comedy scripts and stuff like that, so he's mainly a writer. Uh, give the film a watch if you have uh, a time for a minute. It's really interesting to see that period in history. If you missed it, uh, really interesting to see where the National Lampoon label kind of stemmed from. And yeah, I still don't know how to end this. I don't know how to end these and I, I feel like I'm talking into a void but you know what? who cares who gives a shit if no one sees this you know like it's all about expressing yourself and if you can do that organically I think that's much more important than trying to follow some kind of trend or something on YouTube like you know I don't know playing Minecraft or having or have clickbaity thumbnails that say like I built a bunker in my backyard when all you really did was change room into computer room I've been down the rabbit hole of what's popular on YouTube and I'm very very sad and confused. So anyway, yep, that's my review. Go watch it. Very good. I give it 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. It's a very good film. It's a very good film. I don't know how educational it is in the long run, but it's entertaining nonetheless. And uh, there are elements that I know after doing research are 100% true. So they do have elements of truth in this that are accurate. So watch it. It's fun to know where the National Lampoon label came. And that's it. I'm done ranting. I am done ranting. That's it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. Please. It's how I feed my cats. National Lampoon's Animal House. Baby.